Welcome back to the channel, everyone. You're here with Dave from Mad for Heli. This is episode six of the TV70 build Super Combo. Today, we're going to be working on bottom frame skiddies. All right, let's crack in. Start with the skids, eh? And then we we'll start with the skids. Put these bad boys together. Alright. Comment if you use these. Uh, I don't know, some use, I suppose, fly on concrete or hard surfaces. They're for you. Not for me. I just feel those things in the grass get caught up and stuck and will tip you over. I do have to find the struts in a second. Didn't get them out. Might find them now real quick. All right, stop looking. Struts. All the packaging. All of it. Nice matte black. Matte-ish, a little bit of, I'd say semi-gloss. Semi-gloss, all right. Pretty straightforward, these. Pretty straightforward. Don't need Loctite on these, this is a nylon nut. All right, which way do the skids go? Forward. Forward, I like that. How do you guys like to work on these? Do you like to stick the strut through first and work on it whole, or do you like to put these on first, put the strut through later? Comment down below what you prefer to do. Grub screws, we'll save them for later. Be interesting to see how these fare with autos. Haven't really had any feedback whether they're strong or not. Most important part is, is price point when it comes to these. This is probably one of the most broken things on a heli, I'd say. That and tail blades, or tail fin. All right. What are we looking at here? Let's say, Nylock nut to the inside. Again, it doesn't really show you. It's a guess. I guess the frame's on the outside. The screw goes through the frame, which it looks like in the diagram. So this way. All nylock nuts, so no Loctite on these. This would be perfect if you had a drill. This one. Actually, you know what nuts on the inside. All right, skids in. like one of my favorite parts here. Heli really starts to take shape once the skid goes on. All right. I'll probably just pop the grub screws in for now, but I won't screw them all the way in. I want to get the frame on. I actually want to see the... Uh, I want to see the center of gravity and that'll determine actually how far my skids stick out. So, how do you like your skids? Do you, are you, uh, are you, uh, you like them straight? Do you like them towing out? Do you like them in? Do you like them all the way in? Comment down below how you like them. Interesting little, little things like that are interesting to me. We all have our, we all have our ticks. So, mine's about, you know, roughly just like that, just in a little bit. 
I think if you you know dig it down, it's not going to dig in anywhere, and it's going to slide really nice. So uh, let's have a look at these real quick. We'll just get them down in there. Just start them. Now, my tip for starting these is really a lot of pressure. These actually go in quite well. Very surprised. Some, uh, some of these on other manufacturers are a right old pain in the butthole to start. Very easy, these ones. I like it. They've made the hole big enough. Actually going really easy. I'm impressed. I like it. The more I dig into this heli, the more I'm impressed with it. Every heli has their flaws. It's looking good. Okay. Mainframe. Mainframe. How are we going to do this? We'll attach two ways. Let's see if I can stuff this up. We'll go these under that and then this to the mainframe. All the plastic again. If you put those in a, these two went in a bag, in a vac bag and you tighten them together, they wouldn't scratch. quite nice let's listen to the latest episode of uh, RC Heli Nation V3 and I can't remember who I was talking about it might have been Nick saying that he loves he really likes that and I was talking to other people today and they said they hate it so you know like I said if you had the the decision or the choice on what side frames you wanted I know they have to come with with something in a kit but yeah, maybe down the lines you could either change the colour or not have them at all. Be interesting to know if a line have tested these and that adds strength. I'm, I'm not quite sure. Okay. You can see they've left the cutouts for the back of that to fit nice and flush. Nice little touch. Very light, very light. All right, so now that we've got our width, you can measure if you want. Yep, I'm that anal. All right, you can just feel it hit the tube. Tube. Just get a little bit more. They're honestly not going anywhere. Not anywhere anytime soon, anyway. Alright. So, off camera, I, uh, I installed the tail servo. The square bit that we installed on the last episode, I did install that upside down. I didn't realize there were recesses in the top. Silly mistake, it happens. First build, so uh, what else did I do? A um, little bit of feedback before you put everything in. Put these zip ties in. Um, I've taken this out. I went to make that washer today and just being tired and not thinking I drilled it five mil instead of eight and it doesn't fit, so I've got to go back to that. But I've taken that out. When this is... Can imagine when this is up in there trying to bend those zip ties in and around tech tip build tip just put the zip ties in all I did was put them through and gave it a couple little clicks but put those zip ties in before you're uh, 
your drivetrain. And then all I've done was, again, trusty tweezers, just fed the cables through. Now I've left them loose because the ESC cables still need to go back and the telemetry cable. So I'll leave them loose and then they'll the last last thing I'll I'll end up locking them up. So gotta take these screws out. Four screws. And let's see what this bad boy looks like. Sorry if this is annoying, but the line just put the bolts in a bag. Let's put the bolts in. It saves you time. I'm sure, there's machines that do it. All right. Uh, what else do I? This here, I think I had in the build. If you think if I did put it in here, it's just hard. I'm not really reading the manual. You know, it's. Because I'm recording, I'm kind of in a rush, but uh, it actually tells you that that's the gyro mount that goes in there. So I had to remove it and stuck it in there and actually realized that that acts as your, your stopper, your lock stopper, which is a good idea. You know, if you didn't have that, you could overexert that and you'd end up snapping it or breaking it. So that gives you just the right amount of um, flex to get your battery tray out. Nice little touch. that pinion in later get all my screws in washers in sits in there nicely turn it around for you for the camera and then these just screw in on nylocks you can see machine marks on that it's almost like Almost like they, um, almost like they cover the whole thing in plastic. And you can see, I'm wondering what these scratches were. If you get the right light, have a look at yours. But it looks like they completely cover the whole thing in plastic, and then they actually machine it out. Or is that the is the carbon machine beforehand to get it flat? I don't know. Comment what you think there. Whether that's just molded on, or they actually machine it out. I'd like to know your thoughts there. It's interesting. You, you can't see it, but from my angle, I can see all uh, end mill tracks. Weird. Because it's not on the mainframe. It's only where it's got the white around it. It's very interesting. It's the little thing. I'll tighten them up off screen. Not gonna waste your time tightening bolts up. But uh, this concludes, I oh, know, no. One more part. No, it doesn't have screws. Canopy holder. Oh. It's saying it goes with a line up. All right, that concludes bottom frame and skids. Thanks for stopping by. Episode six, TB70 Super Combo build. See you next time. Thank you. Don't forget to subscribe and ring the bell. Give us a like. Appreciate it. Thank you. Catch you later.